Right. I think I think we we can start. How how did you cope with the with with COVID? Terrible piece of software. Zoom got really popular. Artificial so, intelligence automation. It's coming right. It it's already here. So it's uh, the future is is present, right? So I like new technologies. I like to adopt new people coming with new new technologies, new fresh ideas. It's a lot of uh, people from a company called Quantox, uh, who's doing uh, uh, his biggest uh, porn industry software development company. You are listening to The Landerpreneur Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs of all ages to create meaningful businesses and pursue their passions. My name is Tiago Correa, a technology sales professional and business advisor, and I'm sitting down with entrepreneurs in London to talk about their process, the lessons they've learned, and how to make an impact. If you are new to the channel, welcome. And please do not forget to subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, it's nice to have you back. Uh, hello, friends. So my name is Tiago Correa, and welcome to another episode of the Landerpreneur Show. I'd like to start this episode by welcoming uh, Kaspar Palji, a tech enthusiast and co-founder of uh, uh, Crew New, freelance agency supporting uh, companies uh, with anything from marketing, uh, software develop, uh, developing, uh, web applications developing, and amongst other things. Kasper, thank you very much for joining us today. It's a pleasure having you here. For those who don't know you yet, can you can you please just introduce yourself and share a little bit about your, your background? Hello. Uh, hi, Diego, and thank you for welcoming. My background is... Uh pretty much tech. I've been uh, running my own professional IT company since uh, it was registered 2000, but active business started actually a bit earlier, a couple of years. So in high school, I started programming uh, with PHP. Since that, uh, I've been working with very many different technologies. So technology is something that I've been always working on. Uh, can you can you tell us where where you where you're from originally? You know, uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? I think the viewers would like to understand a little bit about you know your your, I mean your your where you're, you're originally from and what what brought you here to London. My father is Armenian and mother is Estonian. I raised up in Estonia. I went to school in Estonia. I went to university in Estonia. After university, I moved together with three friends to London and. Half of them have gone back to Estonia, everybody their own roads. I continued what I did in Estonia. I opened, I, I met a friend, British guy who was a good salesman. We started a typical software agency and selling. The, the company name was E-Estonia. It's like Estonia, but E-Estonia. Estonia is very famous for its tech savviness and all kind of modern solutions. We started selling more and more Estonian developer services in UK market. So project management and sales and marketing was based here in London and all the coding was done in Estonia. So there where it all started, but we were like a typical agency. We had three, four guys working from Estonia, two of us from London and yeah. That was how we were doing. Why Why did you choose uh, the U, the UK? Start company that you have now. Why, why the UK? What What do you think the UK has that other countries don't have? For example, in Europe, uh, UK was in European Union, and Estonia was taken to the uh, Union in two thousand four. So uh, it opened us as a Eastern Europeans for whom, due to Russian occupation occupation was the borders were closed we couldn't go to west so it was the mm. uh, it was a new opportunity and uh, uk because we were not sure if uk or ireland actually but two english speaking countries uh, all other countries would require first to start learning the language and would take takes quite a long before you're fluent enough yeah. to start doing something. Yeah. And because we, we all now, I mean, we all learn English at school. So for us, having English as a second language is, is, is something that at least many of us already have. So I believe that like countries like Ireland, 
or, or England will make it easy as a, as a point of start. And, and of course, th those countries are well known for being, you know, startup hubs, right? They, they have, a, you know, a great number of small businesses uh, starting, you know, early, year on year, uh, you know, yeah. especially in the tech space. I think it's still a very competitive env environment. Do you think there is that this will change now with Brexit? London and the whole UK, it's in a very strong position. Um, I think UK will lose because of this, but because UK is in a, such a strong position, the, the small loss, it, it, it won't kill, you know, it doesn't won't probably hurt too much. But I think it's not good, yeah, because if you're thinking to pick a new home city in your life, it's a big decision. You're counting all the pluses and minuses, and I'm pretty yeah. sure European Union is one plus for many people. Agree, agree with you. Um, can, can you can you can you tell us a little bit about your journey as an entrepreneur uh, to where you are today? Being a businessman all, all of my life, I, um, I was 13 when I started giving at school, short loans, and the business was built on uh, the idea that didn't exist in in Estonia back then, of course, uh, that you don't take almost any interest, but you take pretty high interest if you don't pay on the right day. And one of my customers, my schoolmate, got into trouble and stole from his father the money to pay me back. And then I was... Uh, told that it's not allowed to do such a business at school. But my mom told me, <laughs> good, good boy, actually, good boy. Can't do that at school, but the idea, the idea is right. <laughs> the, the concept, the entrepreneur, the entrepreneurship uh, yeah, uh, yeah. mind is there, isn't it? At sixth grade, uh, after school, it was possible to go and uh, learn programming. Uh, the first computers came to our school and after that my all my business life has changed what advice would you give uh to uh, your younger self or you know to someone young that wants to start you know as an entrepreneur uh, wants to start his own business start immediately start as early as possible because the older you get the more you get dependent on regular income and it's just not so easy anymore and uh, experience is very important every year you make you work on your own and you do your own business you learn you learn a lot yeah i think i think uh, it's important that uh, you, you know you start early getting getting exposed isn't it to to the business life in general right to the work life in general right and not be so depending on on a job on an employer Yes, and a lot of many other aspects too. Self-discipline, for example, uh, learning to manage with the money so that you don't you don't spend everything that you have. You have always some. You have your own interest. You have your business interest. You have other people in the company. You need to learn to think of everybody's interest. Uh, did you business. did you did you have a, a mentor from an early age? uh when you started did, did, did you seek mentorship did you have anyone that you you learn from no no i i, I started the small business it's like, it's a very typical today that uh, the first business for people is a startup they have a great idea they don't have experience they jump in they use accelerators and all kind of that kind of stuff they just need help they need on every aspect help i started very small i started uh, doing websites on my own. I, I was my, my myself, solo entrepreneur. Then I was many, many years where it was just me and my friend. And we just, we, we've been growing slowly. So that, that I, I never felt the need that I need somebody to come and mentor me. What, how, what are we gonna do? What's gonna happen? How are we gonna get our next 2000 customers, how are we going to expand? How are we going to get the investor to get the next investment? Like such topics arise to me way later when I had already loads of experience behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did anyone in, in your space, in the tech space, programming space, that anyone that inspired you that you uh, have anyone, any references, anyone that have influenced you? 
yeah in 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 the beginning when i i i i did i was young i didn't have much experience i, I took a lot of views of copying things from others you just look what other guys who are more clever and more experienced too and then you just try to take and copy it you're not capable to create your own innovative solutions so i i really much like bill gates who took a unix and just turned the slash from one way to another i thought that this is a cool guy he knows what he's doing <laughs> he's doing a lot of stuff yeah. i believe yeah. <laughs> he's, he's involved in pretty much everything nowadays isn't he yeah is an amazing an amazing uh, character i mean as an entrepreneur what what keeps you motivated uh, casper what gives you energy to keep going you know and being committed to your company uh, uh, growth i think um, the fact that i see that i can grow i can grow a lot i can keep growing there's always possible to grow bigger when i was doing the classical type of agency uh, years ago, then uh, at one moment I saw that I shouldn't be growing anymore. It gets too stressful, too many workers, too many customers. Every customer has needs attention. Every employee needs to be paid. So uh, I, I decided not to grow anymore at one moment. Then I had actually two, three years break. I was working only half time in software development and I moved to Canary Islands and we rented their motor homes. And then I invested into party pop-up tents. We ordered uh, from China, huge load, had some people in a warehouse working, dealing with them. I, I decided I deal with multiple small businesses and I don't have stress in that way. It was all before Curio, before uh, where I saw the potential that as a franchise company, other people are dealing with the customers. So yeah. I have infinite opportunity to grow. That's great. Uh, thank you for thank you for that. I mean, if money was not an option, what would you do every day? Would you continue to do what you do today, or would you be doing something different? At the moment, I would continue growing Cronio because it's a cool stuff. I, I've been building it from the beginning. It's you know how they call it's my baby i i i enjoy it i enjoy working right. on, on it but i've been thinking earlier like what would i do if i if if i wouldn't if i would wouldn't need to go to work if i wouldn't need to serve any customers if i had enough money basically i've been thinking i would uh, probably run some kind of funds to to train young young people and support them with money if if they need uh, to just just make make good things. But I think the best thing to do is to pick the talented young people and train them. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's important to continue to invest in the youngest uh, generations, right? So they can, uh, you know, proceed. I mean, they can continue to evolve, right? Um, let's go into Crunio now and tell tell us a, a little bit about how how this all started and how did it you know the the whole idea of Crunio came came to mind and how did you start this this journey i already told how i saw that the growing the uh, agency bigger and bigger but stressful so i moved into just only half time into that business uh, and but uh, one issue we were all uh, we already had a couple of freelancers we were working regularly we were not actually our company hired by our company uh, and um, estonia got more expensive uh, meanwhile when joined eu so one more, and estonia is like a very very high high tech country and a lot of companies come and build big companies built their teams in Estonia and those 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 uh, companies made it the situation where hiring programmers in Estonia wasn't cheap anymore we started working with more and more freelancers who were from Balkan area again Europe good English speaking uh, pretty good education in terms of IT decent programmers Slavic people are naturally really good in uh, math and that kind of stuff if you look at pizza testy for example 
and um, yeah the, we had excel table where we had freelancers who, who we had worked already we had no added notes about them this guy is good in this stuff that guy is good in that stuff and it became like bigger and bigger the database of freelancers we had worked already and the customer base again also started growing because we didn't have anybody full time and we didn't have too much hassle often uh, some freelancers learned to work together so they formed like their own small team we saw a potential that uh, hey in this way we can grow so we should just maybe mo do it more effectively move away from this excel tables and build some kind of more efficient stock software of filtering out the right guy yeah how, how difficult was it to to start the company in the uk right in terms of uh, let's say process wise i mean bureaucracy is it is it a easy process for someone who comes from a board to come and start to start a business in the uk I is think it a friendly it environment pretty, i think it was pretty complicated uh, back at 2004 when i came it was even complicated to open a bank account back then but now when we established crew i mean it was super simple we have uh, one British director, then we have from Balkan countries, shareholders, and it just just needed a photograph of everybody's passports. And we filled in in the company's house website, everything. And yeah. I mean, nobody needed even to go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, you can do everything online nowadays, isn't it? You can pretty much just set up a company within minutes, I believe. Uh, yeah, in the UK. I mean, pretty much any country in Europe, I would say, it's like that, right? I, I think it's harder to close a company than to open a, <laughs> a company at times. I, I had to close yeah. down one of my companies a uh, few months ago, actually. You know, I still had like a company that was, was not doing anything, was mm -hmm. just, you know, stationed in Portugal. But, you know, I was paying taxes every year and then I decided, you know what, I can't continue to be paying this stuff just to be here and uh, at one point I decided okay I'm gonna close the company and I had to pay I had to get an accountant involved uh, a lawyer involved you know it's the process was, was so complex and 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 I ended up having to pay a, a quite a big chunk of money but it, it depends right yeah. it, it varies but because it depends if because the company had an activity before was quite act active for a few years. There's some paperwork that that needs to be filled. Well, what useful uh, would you would you? I mean, if someone wants to come start their own business, start their own limited company, or as a sole trader, what what would you recommend in terms of resources where people could go and look for useful resources? Uh, we established our uh, to establish the company. It was it's really so easy. You don't need any resources. I yeah. think when it comes to, you need to declare and pay taxes. That's the complex part. I mean, I don't know how to do that. You just need to find the accountant. An accountant. Yeah. An accountant. Yeah. Did you do like a business plan when you started your business? Like, did you look at all the aspects that, you know, taxes before you started? Or did you just jump into the business idea and you start straight away? Just jumped in and started. I mean, I have had enough experience to start companies in other countries in Spain and in Estonia. So I didn't feel any, anything I, that I need any help. I didn't feel that, that. Yeah. but business plan. Yeah. I mean, business plan, I created the business plan because of investors. That's you you need the business plan to show, to, to show investors, you know, how much the business to forecast, isn't it? Like to say, you know, this is yeah. how much yeah. we are worth now and this is how much we are gonna, we expect to grow. So if you, if you're looking for investors, yeah, you, you always need the, a, a business plan in place. And also, also I would say that is a good as a guide for, for you to succeed, to, to set everything, to set you up for, for success. It depends on the type of, of, of business, your own experience, you know, on the things you already know as an as a as an individual right you might need yeah. to write things down to look at things or you might know it already and you you go with it i think it will vary deep on we all have different styles right uh, of of doing things sometimes the best ideas come with no planning right it comes just 
just just as an idea uh, out of the box and and that's it how, how does the um, crew new compares to i mean i don't, I don't want to name any any of your competitors but how how do you differentiate yourself from from the competition right what are your strengths as a, as a company I still if, if have to compare I, I don't need to mention the names but uh, if you want to mention position, i don't have a problem with that but it's up to you okay well um we like to say that the agency quality with freelancer prices you could say it like uh, upwork uh, prices and high street agency quality or maybe top tal quality upwork prices or something like that we function like a freelancer platform like upwork people per hour freelancer.com fiverr.com you name it but the problem of all those is that uh, the, there's no quality behind them you might be lucky but uh, it's a lottery a, I, I... it's it's a lottery yeah it's a lottery you don't have warranty the freelancer might disappear might take your first payment and not deliver anything they can deliver you crap that comes out later because if you're not a programmer i'm talking right now mostly about programming and app development, yeah, programming, web yeah. development field. I mean, I think Fiverr is, for example, really great. If you need, um, if you need really cheap, quick logo design, I've been using myself many times. You just pay a Fiverr or Tenna and you get way better logo that you would do your, on your own. But yeah, it, it's, it's course, true, but it's still, it, 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 it's it, still... It, but if you need a proper, of course, like a branding and, uh, identity company identity then fiverr is not the place to go of course so uh, yeah i mean the quality thing is problematic on the platforms and many other reasons as well like for example you can create your fake reviews you can uh, customers post their jobs into the platform like uh, which is very poorly defined like for example I like something like eBay, but maybe some Twitter functionality mixed in it. Like it's it's a very typical or some customers think that, all right, I have here like a 10 pages uh, of text. I think I've done a good job. But if you don't have experience in writing a software requirement specifications, uh, even if you produce 10 pages, uh, the programmer uh, starts head starts aching if a programmer reads that it's a, it's a headache for a programmer programmer wants like clear definitions and uh, right terminology to be used and um, this is where you need the project manager who will work with you sit with you try to understand what you need and this all happens in a normal agency or in toptal for example but then you pay a really high price yeah, it can yeah. get expensive. Yeah, it can get really expensive. If you go to a proper software development company, sit down there, have a nice cup of tea, and uh, discuss with someone and uh, get the proper documentation. Yeah, can can you say can we can I mean in terms of software development, um, can can you give us like a couple of use cases or examples that are, uh, you know that can be like exciting, that are innovative. Yeah, um, startups uh, is most exciting customers for us. We're building right now quite a few startups. Uh, one is bookswap.co.uk, for example, uh, where you can swap for uh, one pound, give your book that you don't need anymore, and then you get the point, and then for the points you can take others' books. That's pretty cool in terms of technology and idea is also quite cool then another project is uh, for restaurants they have uh, some food that they need to get rid of quickly because otherwise the, they have to throw it away so they sell it cheap on the platform so it's like a saving food They're, they've been saving tons of tons of food this one doesn't haven't come to uk market yet and yeah, m m many other startups too, but we do do all kind of business software, really. Like, yeah. So anything you, you want it, to like, develop to, you can, you yeah. can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like there are really many drop shippers, our customers, for example, and 
all kinds of different fields, really. There are also some technologies that we do more than others, like maybe we do Node.js, like way, way more in the backend than, for example, .NET. But we have on the platform also .NET developers and uh, on ad hoc, they work as well. So it's uh, there are like new new technologies that we never worked before and now people are on board and we start we've been doing projects like almost every month yeah but you you also do other things right i, I i've checked uh, your platform and you also do help company with marketing uh, web app developing development uh, can, can you tell us a little bit about, about the, the services that you can offer to, yeah, web, 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 web development is software development. Yeah, we do web, web applications, mobile applications, and all kinds of that's the that's maybe 85 90% is that. But yeah, we do have a great UI uh, UX designer, then we have some not so great ones. <laughs> Let's be honest. I mean, uh, we're we're not in that kind of business. We, we, we even didn't like to sell design, but since uh, Josh, our main designer, is now full, full, full time working for us, we have just one designer who we are happy to sell. And if someone really okay. needs, and Josh is busy, we say, yeah, we don't watch, but we have more designers. But like developers, we have uh, at the moment 11 working full time and almost 200 who are working with us, but not full time. So compare now this with uh, one design, one really good designer and two not so good designers. So, and with marketing and video editing and all kinds of other services that you can see there, it's about the same situation that uh, we know we have one, two good guys. So we can offer uh, all around service if some customers need all around service, like I want from one place like design, marketing and everything from one place, we can offer it, but we're really hard pushing like all our campaigns are towards the development. We're like mostly development. Yeah, you don't focus so much on the on the marketing side, right? That's not your, your strength, not not your core business. You can yeah, you yeah. can do we some don't stuff. Have like, well. Yeah, for example, we don't have like a really great marketing gurus who will jump in and create you like a perfect marketing strategy and stuff like that. We rather have like technical guys. We have a guy who can, who knows everything about Facebook ad creation, AdWords, uh, SEO, all, all different aspects. Like, you know, in our platform, we have everybody have rating for each skill, which I didn't tell. That was the, the main core idea in the beginning for Cuneo, that it's useless if we know that, for example, John knows JavaScript, PHP, and uh, Python, for example. If we start speaking to him, it comes out that uh, if we rate in 10 points, Python is nine. He's really good at Python, but PHP is crap. He can do mm -hmm. some, but he's pretty crap. So basically we're rating each skill separately. And the same thing is in marketing. Uh, uh, we're, we, if we can scale it, if, the, if we can scale how good the guy is in AdWords. So we know this is the AdWords guy, but if we need, uh, if we need Facebook ads to be created, then it's a totally different guy for that. It's a different skill set, isn't it? It's not the same. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you need you need. Uh, you do do all your your developers uh, are in house developers or or you do a little bit like Fiverr, let's say, uh, like you kind of outsource if you know what I mean. Like for example, if yeah. if I'm good, just give it, if I'm good with social with marketing, so I'll come and I register in your platform, and then your clients or can come and ask for my services and then you take a cut from my service. Is that how it works? Or you have your own core team, your own inside team? If you we, know what have, I mean. we have a, our own small team uh, and um, there are like as mentioned 11 full-time guys working in our team and we're a small team. Uh, uh, not everybody in the same location even we have uh, in 
three different location offices for that small team. And uh, the whole system is built so that uh, there could be more small teams like us. So it's like a mm -hmm. franchise. At the moment, we are three different such as small teams. And uh, okay. I'm, I'm like the one small team, but as I'm a founder and owner of Creonio, I'm hoping very soon that I'm not anymore one of the small teams in the platform who's dealing with customers. We want, don't want to be a competitor for other small teams on the platform, if, to, to put it that way. But at the moment, yes, we are taking uh, the end customers and we're developing software for them. But that's not our core idea. Our core idea is that if you are, for example, in Toronto, there's there's no presence of Creonio in Toronto. You're thinking that maybe I should open an agency and start offering uh, software or web or what that kind of service is what we do. Then uh, rather than building your own team, you can open a crew new uh, team there. You will have all the marketing materials. You will have from the platform people who will deliver you the service. You will get the training. So you, you, so you will leverage the existing resources to so that you can start your own agency, let's say in Canada, for example, right? So we work uh, as a, franchi a, f a franchise, but um, will you have to then hire your own technical team as well, or you can leverage the existing resources that you have available f for building software, for example? The idea is that you don't need any, you don't need to hire any technical resources. You will get it from us. If, if you grow, for example, and, uh, and, uh, and you will, you can start easy. You can start project based. You bring a project in and it will be done uh, project based. But if you grow and you will need full time guy, you will have your own dedicated remote guys. The Toronto actually is not a good, good example because we're really orientated on Europe because it's easier. Yeah. Um, the yeah. time difference, the, most of the guys we are, we are bringing to you are from Eastern Europe. So Toronto is not maybe the best example, but the idea is the same. Yeah. Yeah. The concept is what it matters. I mean, yeah, of course the time, time zones and stuff makes, makes the difference, right? So, so that your technical resource can really align to the different um the projects and they don't have any delays on delivering times and etc right because if you have a six hour 12 hour difference i mean it, it can yeah. have a great impact on 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 production right i i believe on response times etc lead times for deliver and and all, all this this kind of thing um i mean obviously we've been we are i think now over a year that we are in lockdown, in and out of different lockdowns. This has had an impact in many companies across, not only across the UK, but I mean, at glo glo globally, I can confidently say that globally. How how did you cope with, the, with, with COVID? Did you have to change anything on your business plan uh, and how easy or, or difficult it was for you to adapt to this new world? Yeah, there are many aspects. One is, is uh, remotely in that aspect, uh, it's good for us <laughs> because we've been, we started fully remote and we're at the moment mostly remote and we're used to work remotely. So for us, it's a great thing. Now all the world learned how to do things remotely and share the screen and speak do the video events and all kind of that kind of stuff. So in that terms, I think COVID is great for us and really good experience for everybody really. But economically yeah. in the spring, uh, it was bad because everybody was afraid. Nobody knew what's going to happen. There were no, nobody was really thinking, Hey, there's an idea. I think we yeah. should improve our software. People had like different problems in their heads, or not the, how to expand or improve their software really. So, but uh, then there was a summer. Summers are usually always more quiet. People have holidays and stuff like that. But 
like from August, it really kicked up like every year. I mean, I didn't see any difference really. Did did you change anything on the on the way you work on the tools you use to stay remote, or was something already in place? No, maybe only that uh, by some reason this terrible piece of software Zoom got really popular. So we had implemented that into <laughs> our system because everybody know, start, wanted to Zoom. Everybody said like, let's do a Zoom on Thursday. Hey, uh, it what became about a verb. Zooming? It became a verb. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know why people like Zoom because I've been all, we've been using Skype for ages and it's way better software because it's running all the time. You can just call me. I mean, I don't need to. Uh, need to send you some kind of link and in zoom there's nobody it's always people are asking like hey where is this button to share the screen oh, okay i don't have a right <laughs> and you give me the right so it's like why i mean skype it's just ringing in my pocket and then you mean you mean uh, skype it, for it, business it, or, or the per i mean there are differences just, right on the way just a normal yeah. skype it works like uh, whatsapp it's yeah. it's there i can see if my friend is uh, uh, green or yellow uh, away or red busy and it's not ringing and then i can call and he can answer and say hey i can't call right now maybe i give you a call back in a sec all right cool and then we call again and then oh, okay i can speak right now oh, let me share my screen so basically yeah. like you wouldn't everybody is in whatsapp today so you could be if whatsapp had the screen sharing capability then I would probably. I think. I think. He, I think. He, I think that will go with. The, I mean, uh, look, Zoom. I mean, uh, I work for the. I work for a competitor, so <laughs> I'm a bit suspect when I when I talk about Zoom. Um, I'm probably not, not the best person to talk about it in this call. Um, oh yeah. Of course. Of okay. course. Uh, you know, but I know I'm familiar with the with the industry and I'm familiar with the tools that we have available. I think everything has its own use case right um if you want to yes. have a call like we're having today and if yeah, you need to share different. content yeah. yeah if you want to have a conference call if you want to if you need like to have a video device uh because you are meeting someone you know uh, you know not in a different country or yeah then webex or any other similar tool would probably be ideal for that use case if it's just a phone call then you have different systems that i mean you had skype or you have calling, or you can use you can use Webex for everything, right? <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah. It, it, they have everything. You have uh, messaging, persistent messaging, uh, whiteboarding that you can annotate. You can uh, do video calls, uh, and you know you have calling as well integrated. And and if and and it's a platform that with the power of APIs, it can easily integrate to, with with other softwares, with other applications that can help you uh, collaborate you know and and work and be and stay productive right are you going to stay remote your does your is your company going to stay remote moving forward are you going to have like re some remote some uh, work back to the office what what do you think is going to look like your i think it's, it's going to remain the same i mean we were fully remote we became mostly remote and we will remain mostly remote because that one of the business ideas is that the development team is in eastern europe and customers are in the western europe so that's one of the core ideas and yeah do, so do you think companies uh, uh, will embrace this do you think well now they had to embrace this change right and and start digitizing because i think some companies were still reluctant to di digitize in general right when when we look at the internet and then we look at video conference and you know you, and then we have like for example digital currency um do you do you see you know people are embracing now because they've been forced to and then they're gonna go kind of back to normal or you think all this technology that was already there available to us like all these tools and then we can talk about we can we can throw in as well automation and artificial intelligence do you think this is going to be deployed more and more now of course of course uh, people learned people got good good lesson because of covid and if if you're if your technology is great if you can use it if you learn to use it 
people are in general slow in learning new technologies they like to they're conservative and naturally conservative they they're happy to to use the tools they've been using and their bus always used and their dad said that use and that that's how people are i think in u.s fax is still used today yeah so, yeah yeah, I mean, artificial yeah. intelligence, automation, it's coming, right? It, it's already here. So it's uh, the future is is present, right? So it's here and I think companies should embrace it and not be afraid of of anything, right? Anything that can contribute to, towards the well-being of, of us all, you know, in our society, I think, I think is great. But again, to, to crew new, your target customer, startups small businesses i would say um is that the case still um it's, it's smaller uh, medium-sized businesses uh, rather at the moment but uh, we've been outsourcing enterprise software too and uh, we're trying to expand them to all kind of software really all about software development because of the core idea that was mentioned many times, there's a, a potential to grow all the time. And yeah. uh, I like new technologies. I like to adopt new people coming with new, new technologies, new fresh ideas. It's like, this is what I love. This is what I'm working. I'm working a lot and I, 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 I just see that the crew new will be doing really all kinds of software not in a very far future and how how do you market yourself i mean do you how do you how do you get new business how do you get customers i mean uh, what type of marketing strategy do you do you have there's a at already more than half of the business is uh, generated by franchise and resellers so i'm trying to understand how they sell but they mm -hmm. really a lot I think they are uh, not telling they because they feel maybe competition or I don't know so a lot goes through resellers but do you, we do, you leverage we like do, social, do. social media for example this sort of but we uh, our small team we are doing uh, social media paid organic uh, google paid organic bird of mouth been in business so long so personal contacts a lot emailing, yeah, that's, that's... emailing uh, personal contacts building list using this kind of modern tools uh, harvesting contacts from linkedin the marketing stretch at the board is quite a lot of cards there actually <laughs> so we're, yeah, we're, we're really hard on marketing right now yeah, that, I mean, it needs to be right. Uh, I mean, you have so many tools now that you can leverage, so many social media platforms, right? That you should, should or yeah. you can uh, leverage. Like you have Instagram, you have uh, now you have TikTok, you have Facebook, you have LinkedIn, a more professional uh, networking Pinterest, platform. Instagram, yeah, what YouTube, YouTube as well. So, yeah. so you can leverage. I think you should you should have a presence in all of them. That's my honest opinion. When people ask me, oh, what? Where, where should I be? I think it should be everywhere. I mean, you should try and whatever you content you create, you know, uh, you should try and, you know, and have it across the board. I mean, YouTube is, of course, is more visual, is video, and but Instagram as well, and and then pictures and images, and then LinkedIn yeah. probably more to network with other pro with professionals in your in your space, but also to do lead generation, right? For more B two B. It depends on your business, of course. Yeah, in our business, yep. uh, the account-based marketing and LinkedIn, it's a very valuable source. Yep. But yeah, knowledge-based, like Quora, or, uh, for example, we're, we're using. People are asking some questions tech-related that uh, we can give a best advice, then that's a great marketing. Yeah. So if I, if I'm, if, if, I mean, any of our listeners or watches, uh, I mean, if they are, if they're looking to start a new business, if they have a, a business idea, they want to start uh, an application or, or something, they, well, they have a business concept, a business idea. Why should they come to crew new and not going elsewhere? 
why should they come to you? If they want to get a good price, they have two options. They either come to Crewno or they go to Upwork or some similar platform and we offer better quality than those guys do. That's the really the only so reason. So it's not only the price, it's also the other, I mean, the quality of, the, of your service that, that is superior to, to those Yeah, guys, we can't. Right? We can't beat only with price. We're not the only one who do, do the freelancers from cheaper countries. We're not the only one in this field. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they don't do the quality. They don't have project managers. They don't do quality control. They're not concentrated on one area and don't do really hard on that region. We are taking over from top companies from certain cities where we have established ourselves, like Pragujevac in Serbia, uh, flew in Napoca in Romania, where we have two bigger, bigger offices. We're taking over, for example, in Kraguja, which we're taking over a lot of, a lot of uh, people from a company called Quantox, uh, who's doing uh, uh, his biggest uh, porn industry software development company. And, you know, people get married get kids they don't feel like working for porn industry anymore but mm. they have solid experience in programming already so anyway yeah basically we're we're really good at finding at certain locations certain uh, people for certain technologies so that we push it really hard on the, that term and yeah if, that's if, good if you want a proper developer then and you don't want to pay a lot what are your choices yeah, yeah, I mean, you always have to pay, you know, everything comes with the price, I say, right? Nothing is for free. There are no free lunches <laughs> in this yeah. in this world. And, and if you want something something good, I mean, you need, you need to pay for it. You need to pay for quality because uh, if, you, uh, if you go for the cheap, it's not always good to go for the cheapest option, right? I mean, I'm not uh, saying... No, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, cheap, cheap has really bad uh, smell on it, isn't yeah. it? It's like... Uh, like but yeah let, let me correct like we're not trying to be cheap we're trying yeah. to be way cheaper than you would expect to pay if you go to a yeah. decent software development company on the high street or if you go to top tile for example you you in top tile prices start from like maybe 60 dollars per hour um, from Crewno, you maybe get for thirty dollars per hour a really senior, decent guy working really fast. So you see, it's like a two times difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Where where do you see yourself? What's your vision for the next five years for Crewno? Uh, we've got uh, the first uh, investment, which uh, you can imagine, like everybody, it's like uh, friends and family and fools, how they call. I wouldn't say fools, but friends and family true. We're uh, going to invest this before we want to take the investment, the bigger investment. We want to invest our own money to do certain growth. So we're hoping to grow hopefully in a half a year, but maximum one year, about double. And then we're looking to take a bigger investment on board. And after that, we're hoping to grow again. That's good. Quite a lot, but I don't know. For that, there's no plans yet. It depends on the size of the investment. And then we will negotiate and think and see where we are and how much we can see that we grow and how we could grow and the new plans. It's good. Well, at least you have some investors uh, that are keen in your, in your business, right? And uh, as long as you keep growing, that, I think that's all positive, right? And yeah, that was interest. Uh, yeah, we started to speak with investors uh, a little bit before COVID, like uh, a bit more than a year ago, and there was interest. Yes, but then COVID kicked in and everything was really on hold. Yeah, everything yeah. is put on hold. But I guess in the yeah. technology space, in the tech space, software application development, there is always an opportunity, right? Because now is even the time to innovate to implement new ideas right new ways of working and, yeah. and for that they they need people like you companies like you right uh, anyone would need uh, because you can have uh, the brilliant the best idea in this world but if you don't have anyone that can support that idea with 
with technical expertise, with know-how. I mean, you go nowhere with that. It's just a concept in your head, right? So yeah, you need yeah. you need those guys as you need then marketing, as you need then sales. So, you know, but I think the technology space is probably it has probably been the less affected. I would say. Yeah, I think so. right? yeah, right. technology because... and home delivery, maybe. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and e-commerce, yeah. e-commerce, e-commerce, everything that is yeah. online, right? The world has yeah. gone digital here, yeah? right? It, it, yeah. It's a reality is here to stay, right? Everything is virtual now, right? Uh, yeah, I hope n doesn't stay too much because then, you know, it's important that we, we meet each other every now and then we still go out, we hang out outside. It's also important to stay in contact with of the course. elements. But business-wise, I mean, imagine if you were here. I mean, if if all this was available to me, I don't know, 20 years ago or more, even more, when I was 15, 16 years old. I mean, and I have all the knowledge that all these 15, 16-year-olds have today in front of them, in front of their eyes. I mean, you just have to go to YouTube and you can learn pretty much anything. Right. Everything yeah. is, you, I mean, I don't want to say that the, the educational system is bad or worse. It depends on you. Sometimes people need guidance and need discipline and all that. Uh, and I think education is important. It, it has been good to me. Uh, I kind of drop off school when I was very young and then I jump on and then I kind of started again at uh, later age and it was good to me because i needed some some guidance i mean everyone's different but i didn't have the knowledge or access to knowledge that we have today right that's let's be honest i didn't have internet when i was 16. i didn't know what that, i mean i knew what it was but it was like a handful of people had internet back in the days Not yeah everyone. yeah you can really yeah. google anything these days i mean it's it's amazing yeah Everyone is and, on your uh, phone, right? It's on yeah, your phone. The power, um, it, 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 your, your phone is a supercomputer. Well, uh, my phone is a bit crappier than my supercomputer in front of me, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty super, yeah. It's super. I mean, you have everything. Yeah. You can run the business from your phone. Yeah. You can run a company from your phone if you want to, right? I mean, whatever it is, all right? If you want to sell, I don't know, your, if you have a clothing brand, I don't know, anything, right? You can do it. From your phone, you can have all the applications, everything on your phone, on your mobile device. So it's not start, you can do you can do video, you can have start your YouTube channel, you can do anything from just a, a mobile phone, a smartphone. You don't yeah, you can, but uh, but still, it's not that easy as it sounds, though. You know, it's not, but yeah, it's but, yes, but at it's least way you got easier. You got the tool. You got the tool. Yeah, uh, one problem uh, solved. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's not like uh, you. You. I mean, you're not limited uh, to something, right? Uh, yeah. You, you have no excuses nowadays. I would say, right? You have no excuses. I mean, it's it's all there for you. Is you know, you want to build. You what you want to be. I mean, you can be whatever you want to be, right? I'm. Not, I'm not saying that. I mean, it's difficult. It's hard. It's a journey, right? You need to really have the mindset and. You need to be available, right? Psychologically available for certain things, right? It might not be yeah. like a physical job, but you need to have the mindset. And you need to be available here to do certain things. Uh, yeah. Uh, whether it's as a, as a developer, whereas you are a, a, I don't know, a sales professional, and to be an entrepreneur, you, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, responsibility. Right, that you carry with yourself, right? Because you're not, you're not, yeah. you're responsible for a business, you're responsible for, for a society because, you know, you help a bunch of other clients that also, you know, contribute towards the society. You employ people, right? You are responsible for yeah. those individuals because if you go bust, that's it, those people will be out of, those, those individuals will be out of a job. And not everyone can be an entrepreneur, right? No, everyone wants to be one. And that's fair enough. You know, some people just want to be employed. It's a different type of people. Some people just, they like if they go to work, they do what they're required. They don't need to think too much. They don't need to improve. Yeah. They just do the stuff and get their salary. And then they go at certain time away from their office or work location and they can forget 
100% their job. They don't need to think about it. It's yeah, because it's, I, it's I, I a know lot in your head. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially when you're starting, uh, I mean, uh, or when you start a business that doesn't work as you expect in it, and when there's not is not bringing enough revenue and. And you have to worry about, you know, certain things about people, you know, you have to pay salaries, you have to pay commissions, you have to pay this, you have to pay your bills. And then it's weekend and you have all that stuff in your head, uh, you know, so you have to work sometimes weekends, you have to look after stuff, but it's what it is, right? Those are the risks and with risk comes the rewards as well, right? So if... Yeah, I think if you yeah. have the if you have the mindset and you think the that this is for you of being entrepreneur i think uh, you should definitely start immediately and uh, if you fail then try again try again <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's not it's all part the of the success but yeah i know it's of course it's harder to after first failure the mindset is it's harder to start i mean the second. you can fail the only thing i recommend and is fail but never go bankrupt you know, like, don't don't allow yourself to don't cross the line. I mean, you can fail a business, you can close a company. Look, it my t shirt business didn't work. I tried, it doesn't work. But don't get yourself into debt into into a fin a, a, a difficult financial situation that then is difficult to overcome. And then, if you open bankruptcy or anything, then you're not able to uh, to start any other business again. And you yeah. know, it's hard. It's hard to to overcome that. It's not impossible, but then it's harder for you to overcome that. And uh, you know, th th those are challenges. You know, that uh, you need to be careful. I mean, when you do that, I mean, what does entrepreneurship means to you? That's a hardest question today. <laughs> it means. Uh... But it is, I think, I don't know. I, I don't have a creative answer. Uh, it means that you create your own future on your own. You don't go to the safe. I could just go and work for someone else uh, safely with a good salary, with loads of experience in, in IT. It's super simple, but uh, it's not exciting. It's ex to being entrepreneur, it's exciting. It's, um, I started yeah. because of freedom, I think, uh, yeah, I started with, because of freedom, because I, I, yeah, I mean, you're free to, to do your own thing, right. To take your, to give your, I mean, do your own planning, plan your day, play the way you want to work. When project, I started, your company. yeah, when I started, I was living in Estonia and the borders opened and I felt that I want to maybe travel to a lot and. When I, when I moved to UK, I felt that now I want to go to Estonia and I want to go there pretty often and stay pretty long. <laughs> yeah, true. I want we, to go we there can... maybe four times per year and stay, stay like, <laughs> um, for a month every day. How can I do that if I'm working in a big corporation, eight, nine to five? It's it's different, right? It's a different concept, right? Some people, I mean, I, I, you work for, for, a, for a big big corporation yeah you have other responsibilities you, you have it's different right it's like we said you know you have to make your own choices right some people are happier working for someone else for a for a corporation for to have a yeah. boss to be guided to follow instruction other people are better at being entrepreneurs you know that's it i think we all have our our places otherwise we wouldn't have there wouldn't exist any entrepreneurs because we cannot all be the same, right? We cannot all be entrepreneurs. There still yeah, it comes be... with its cost. Yeah, it comes with its cost. It, 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 it is, it is exact, exactly that <laughs> that I, I, wanna, I wanted to say. Anyway, for um, thank you very much for taking the time, you know, to speak with me and, and share your, your story. Uh, not only with me, but also with uh, with all the viewers. It has been an absolute pleasure uh, talking to you. There is some discounts available uh, for, I mean, if you want to use the Crew New uh, services, I will leave them on the comments, on the description below, sorry. I will leave them on the description below. So I think it's a 15% for whoever wants to use the, the services. Yeah. 
before the end of April. If you want to use after the, I mean, whenever you want, then is a, is a ten is a ten percent and that's correct discount. That's correct, right? The ten percent. I'll leave uh, all the details. Uh, I will leave your details as well, so where people can find you online, when you can find the crew new online, in your in your profile uh, as well. Thank you to all the listeners. Uh, a big thank you for to you all for sticking around. Don't forget uh, to subscribe to the channel and, of course, click that notification bell so you are notified of all the new content. And yeah, Kaspar, it has been a pleasure having you here. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, for everything. Yeah, and uh, don't forget as well. Well, I think you already did. And to all the listeners to subscribe to Tuba Thought uh, channel yep, and did. leave a, leave us a comment on the video. Let us know. Uh, your thoughts and I will make sure I will reply to all the comments below. Thank you. Thank you very much.